What are you really trying to tell me? And believe me, no Christian in 40 years has been able, able to open his mouth to tell me what it means. It had to be an American, not Brother Sharosh. It had to be an American. He said, it means sired by God. I said, what? He said, no, 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 you ask me what it means. I'm only telling you what it means, not that I believe that God sired a son. So, he says, Jesus Christ. I don't know, this to the Muslim is a blasphemy to say that Jesus is God. But there is another blasphemy from the Christian point of view. You see, the Christian, the Orthodox Christians, the, the Anglican Christians, the Methodists, and all the Roman Catholics, they all believe in the Holy Trinity, and they say that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. You never hear the word is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You'll never hear in the name of the Holy Ghost and the Son and the Father. Never. You'll never hear in the name of the Son and the Holy Ghost and the Father. It must ever be in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He is always the second person of the Trinity. If anybody in Christendom says that Jesus is the Father, it is a heresy in the Christian church. From the Muslim point of view, attributing divinity to any created being is blasphemy, kufr. But from the Christian point of view, from the church's point of view, Anglican, Methodist, Lutheran and all, if anybody says, has the temerity to say that Jesus is the Father, it is an ancient heresy which was condemned and extirpated by the Roman Catholic Church over a thousand years ago. They got rid of it. Where you say, and our brother Shorosh, my brother Shorosh, I don't know why he hid that fact, that he actually believes that Jesus is the Father. In his book, The Liberated Christian, in case he has forgotten it, he might not have brought it along, I brought it along with me, the liberated Christian. Palestinian. Uh, the liberated Palestinian, I beg your pardon. With the Star of David in the background, I don't know, liberated from the Jews or liberated from what? Liberated Christian. He says, I'm quoting from page 80, it's a most loving heavenly father. I thank you for the miracles you have done in my life. The greatest miracle of, miracle of all was that you loved me enough to die for me. Who the Father died for him. And this is in church history, as Master of Divinity, Brother Shorosh will be able to confirm, is an ancient heresy which is called Patripassianism or monarchianism, or sibilianism. You don't have to worry about these two yard long terms. But this is in church history. It had been extirpated some thousand years ago. But it is, he is the father. But Jesus contradicts this statement. He says, call no man your father on earth. For there is only one who is your father, which art in heaven, Matthew, Chapter 23, verse 9. And Jesus is a man on earth, walking this earth, which Peter testifies in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, approved of God among you. A man. By miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. He didn't do it. God did by him. He was using Jesus. God Almighty was using Jesus, which God did by him in the midst of you, which you yourself also know. So he is not the Father. He says to the Jews, Ye have neither heard his voice, the voice of God, at any time. You have not heard the voice of God any time, nor seen his shape or form at any time. The Jews were seeing Jesus and they're listening to him. They didn't hearken to the message. But they were listening to him. They were not deaf. All the Jews, they were reacting to his message. They were listening. 
They were hearing and they were seeing and they wanted to stone him and he used to get out of the way, he used to run away, he used to hide. They were seeing his form and he used to disappear, not into thin air, but hiding away, running away, according to the Bible. So he could not be the father and he could not be that God. The Bible gives us a test. What, what God is not. What God is not. Like in Islam, in the Quran, also we are given. What God is not. That God is not like anything you can think or imagine. Anything you think or imagine is not Him. We are given some 99 attributes of God that is kind, is merciful, is just, is holy, and on and on, 99. But there are certain things that He is not this, He is not that, He is not that. The Bible also gives us what God is not. It says in the book of Job, chapter 25, verse 4 to 6, said, how then can man be justified with God? How can you compare any human being with God? How can he be clean that is born of a woman? Anyone that is born of a woman is not good enough to be compared with God. Anyone. Whether it's a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad, whether it's a Rama or a Krishna or a Buddha, anyone that a woman carries for nine months can never be your God. That's what the Bible says. When even the moon is not bright, and the stars are impure in his sight. In the sight of God. What is all this? This moon, the stars, what is it? Nothing. How much less is man? You see, the Christians are thinking that, look, Jesus is born of a woman, no doubt. But he was born miraculously, which we agree. So that makes him something supernatural, because he's, he was born miraculously. So God Almighty, in this book, the Christian Bible, he says, how much less is man? If the sun and the moon and the stars are nothing in his sight, what is man? You and I. What are you? What are we? How much less is man who is but a maggot? You know what's a maggot? You people living in concrete jungles, you don't know what maggot is. You know maggot. I won't describe. You better look at the dictionary, Oxford Dictionary will tell you. Maggot. Those worms, you know, that goes on manure. Human dung. Maggots. You and I, according to this book of God, you are nothing more than a maggot. And the Son of Man, who? Jesus Christ. Explicit statement. In case you have something at the back of your mind, that Jesus is an exception, God Almighty goes out of his way to tell you, look, this Jesus of mine is no exception. And the Son of Man, ask any Christian, who is the Son of Man? Eighty-three times in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is described as the Son of Man. Son of Man, Son of Man, as the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hasn't got a place to rest his head. And the Son of Man, as sign of Jonah, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, so shall the Son of Man, eighty-three times. Thirteen times his address as the Son of God, thirteen times. But 83 times, 70 more times, son of man, son of man, son of man, and ask any Christian missionary, who is the son of man? He said, Jesus. Amen. So God only said, and the son of man, who is only a worm. Worm. He's a worm. We are maggots. A worse degree than a worm. He is a worm. In other words, don't make a mistake. Anyone that is born of a woman, and the Bible tells us in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 21, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised. God getting circumcised? Please, please, we must heed the advice given at the beginning that... There should be no clapping for this. At the end of a talk, if you give an applause, accept it for both parties, please. Thank you. Okay. When he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. Who was in his mother's womb? Jesus. How did he come out from there? Like you and me. Who? God. I'm asking if you were a nurse, you can imagine any situation. 
If you were a nurse 2,000 years ago in this table, helping Mary when she's delivering the child, can you for one moment think that that helpless little creature with all the filth and the muck, your God, your Jehovah, your Allah, Astaghfirullah. 